Good morning, everybody. It's meteorologist Jeff Gerber, and we're giving you a latest update on Hurricane Laura, which is continuing to move through the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be moving uh, through the Gulf and up into southeast Texas as we head into tomorrow night and going into uh, looks like uh, Thursday morning as a major hurricane. We're looking at winds upwards of 115 miles per hour as it does move through uh, the area. So we are getting ready. Uh, for the possibility of this major hurricane to come through the area and cause uh, quite a few problems for uh, southeast Texas, it looks like, as we uh, get into um, tomorrow night into Thursday morning. Here's the latest satellite, and you can see the storm is starting to get organized fairly quickly out into the Gulf of Mexico. You can definitely see the spin starting to uh, wrap around some of those clouds across the center. Uh, right now, uh, take a look at the storm in, um, well, let me go back. I got <laughs> this is the latest computer models. We'll show you that real quick here. And you can see most of the uh, computer models indicating that they are going to be sliding right up into uh, southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana. So Hurricane Center basing their track on what they're seeing with the ensemble forecast or all the computer models together. Uh, the ma majority of them pushing it right up the Sabine River into uh, southeast Texas. Now, here's Hurricane Laura. Winds are at 75 miles an hour right now, moving to the west-northwest at about 16. Uh, it slowed down just a little bit. Category 1 hurricane. Here's the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Takes it into the central part of the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, changes over to a Category 2 by, looks like, tomorrow morning. By tomorrow evening, they're expected to be a major hurricane, Category 3, uh, with winds at 115 miles per hour. And then looks like it's going to be making landfall right near uh, Sabine Pass, uh, right near uh, parts of southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana, as we head towards looks like late, late Wednesday night or early morning hours on Thursday as a category three hurricane, a major hurricane. And then eventually it starts to move northward by 7 a.m. Winds are down to 90 miles an hour, which is still hurricane strength as it moves through the lakes area of southeast Texas and then up towards the Shreveport area and into southern Arkansas as we head towards Thursday evening. So this storm system is going to be moving through and it's going to be moving through very quickly. We're not going to see a stall. We're not going to see um, days and days of rain with this. This is not a Harvey. Uh, this is Laura, and Laura is going to be moving through very quickly. We'll start to see maybe hurricane force winds coming in late Wednesday afternoon or tropical storm force winds coming in late Wednesday afternoon. Hurricane force winds by late Wednesday night in through uh, parts of the morning on Thursday, and then by Thursday afternoon, uh, those winds will start to die down, and by Thursday evening, the storm's all the way up into Arkansas, so we'll have the rains in, and, it, and it'll be a very quick uh, storm moving through the area. So we're not talking about a whole day of hurricane force winds. We're not talking about a whole day of rain. We're talking about, um, I would say, maybe a 12-hour to 16-hour period where we're going to deal with anything from uh, tropical storm force winds to hurricane winds back to tropical storm force winds to uh, some rain bands kind of moving through to some very heavy rain and then back to some scattered rain as the uh, as, as it starts to move out so this is the latest forecast as of 10 o'clock this morning you notice as we get into friday and the weekend it takes off towards the east coast and it's and it's way out of here all right um Category 3 hurricane, what does that mean? It means winds of 111 to 129 miles per hour. Uh, right now they're thinking it's going to be about 115. Will it get to 129, 130? I don't think so at this point. It looks like it's probably going to stay right around that uh, 115 area as far as uh, coming in. Uh, but still, it's a major hurricane. There's going to be a lot of problems as it comes in as far as power outages and uh, things like that. All right, here is a look at uh, future casts, and we've kind of... I want to show you this. This is what we can expect as we head into Wednesday night. By 6 o'clock, we'll start to see some showers come in. As we head towards uh, the late evening hours, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, uh, that's when we start to see maybe uh, the outer rings of the eye start to move into maybe Camera Parish or now Jefferson County. This, this actual model showing everything coming in 
uh, just to the east of the Sabine River. Uh, so take all this information and kind of shove it off towards the west just a little bit. Uh, it's basically the same forecast. It's just a little shoved off towards the east. But notice as we head into 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, we have the eye wall starting to come on shore with a current forecast. And as it comes on shore around that eye wall, you see the dark reds and the yellows. That is um, winds of anywhere from 100 to 115 miles an hour. You can see some gusts higher than that. That's where you see the heaviest rainfall. On the east side, that's where you can catch some tornadoes coming through Cameron Parish at this time. Usually on the west side, you don't see too much in the way of tornado activity, but we're going to see some heavy rain, and we're still going to see wind gust over 100 miles per hour through parts of southeast Texas as it comes in. Uh, as we go a little bit later on in the morning, say about uh, 3 o'clock or so, it'll continue to move inland. As we head towards 5, 6 o'clock, it'll be moving up towards the lakes area, still as a Category 1 hurricane with winds over 70 miles per hour. And then as we head into late morning hours, we're talking 9, 10 o'clock, it should be moving up towards Toledo Bend, moving north of us. The rain will start to end as it moves out as well, and things will slowly start to get a little bit better. But you can see how it is just going to be uh, kind of a late night overnight type of storm system. Uh, 10 o'clock or so we start to feel some of the uh, tropical storm force winds. By the time we get into midnight or so, hurricane force winds, uh, they move through the area from between midnight and say 8 o'clock and then they're out of here. So it's just a short period of time that we're going to deal with this, but it's going to be very intense as we do deal with it with winds over 100 miles an hour. We're expecting maybe uh, some places two to four inches of rain, some places upwards of four to eight inches of rain, and maybe some places over in southwest Louisiana on the east side getting more than that. Uh, I think the big deal is going to be the wind with this, uh, and that's going to cause numerous power outages. We're talking about trees down all over the place, uh, roads blocked because of the trees down. We could see some structural damage this way as far as um, some roof damage. Uh, we also could see um, problems as far as trailer homes. If you live in a trailer home, usually those are rated for about 100 mile an hour winds if they're tied down. Uh, if we're talking about wind gusts over 100 miles per hour, if you live in a mobile home, you might want to figure out a, a, a different place to be, a sturdier structure to be as these storms move in, especially if you live around the triangle. The winds will, will lessen somewhat as we go up towards the lakes area, but if you live around the triangle, live in a mobile home, you might want to think about going to uh, some place with a substantial structure. Um, but most of the, if you think about it, most of the triangles have under mandatory evacuation. So if you live in Orange County, you live in uh, Jefferson County, you live in a mobile home, you probably you need to evacuate and get out of here. I think most folks, at least around the triangle here, should probably evacuate and evacuate uh, fairly quickly. If you're going to evacuate, uh, you probably want to go west. Definitely won't want to go east. You don't want to go north. You want to go west. You want to go places like um, maybe Waco, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. Uh, I'll show you why. You probably don't want to go right over towards, say, uh, Houston or Galveston or Conroe here in just a second. But once again, uh, this storm system is going to be basically an overnight event where we're going to deal with some very intense weather. So here's the timeline. Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, uh, it's right over southeast Texas, southwest Louisiana. Tropical storm winds coming up maybe as early as the afternoon going until 8 a.m. on Thursday. Triangle will see hurricane force winds maybe as early as 9 o'clock Wednesday night into about 3 a.m. on Thursday. If you're up in the lakes area, you'll see hurricane force winds anywhere from 11 o'clock uh, Wednesday evening into about 5 a.m. on Thursday. All right, we have seen a, uh, a new update from the Hurricane Center. They have put everybody under a, or this is from the National Weather Service Lake Charles, they put everybody under a hurricane warning. That basically means hurricane conditions are going to be felt within the next 36 hours. That includes all of southeast Texas. We're going to see hurricane force winds, which is 74 miles an hour or more over the next 36 hours. So be prepared for that. If you have any loose stuff out in the yards, uh, make sure you get that all in. Uh, a lot of folks just want to evacuate. Once again, you, you, as you know, Orange County and Jefferson County under mandatory evacu evacuation today. You probably want to be taken off there. Now, if you look out, there are tropical storm warnings. Now, this includes the Houston area now, Conroe now, Huntsville now. So if you're evacuating to there, of course, the winds aren't going to be as strong. You could see wind gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour. But just be aware, if you're evacuating to those locations, it's not going to be as bad, but you'll still see some very windy conditions and maybe not as, you won't see as much rain. 
but you're definitely going to see some windy conditions. I mean, am I saying if you've got a room in Conroe now, you need to cancel that and get out of there? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying uh, you're not going to be completely out of it if you go to Conroe. If you're going to Houston, you're not going to be completely out of it. You're going to be running into some winds, not necessarily the rains, but you're definitely going to be running into some winds still there. And then we have a storm surge, storm surge warning across uh, the coast, including uh, Jefferson County and Orange County. We could see storm surge up to nine feet through uh, Jefferson County, Orange County, and over towards southwest Louisiana. You're looking at storm surge maybe up to 13 feet uh, as we get into um, late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So that's going to cause a lot of flooding problems along the coast, along those edges of water where the storm uh, surge is going to be coming up. All right, as far as rainfall, like I said, you get over towards the Houston area, you're not going to see much, a couple of inches. Uh, you get right here in southeast Texas, uh, you could see anywhere from about maybe four to eight inches. You get over into southwest Louisiana, you could see more than that, uh, 10, maybe 12 inches of rain. Good news is it's going to be moving through very quickly, and then it's going to be out of here uh, very quickly. So we won't have time for the rain to really add up a whole ton uh, through, it um, looks like, um, uh, Thursday morning. So it'll be once again very quick out of here. All right, if you're just joining uh, this live uh, update, once again, I want to show you the track. The track takes it into the Gulf of Mexico. It, it ramps it up to a major hurricane before it makes landfall. That's going to be right around uh, the Texas Louisiana line, Sabine Pass, as we head towards early on Thursday morning. And then it moves it quickly northward. By the time we get into uh, Thursday evening, it'll be up around the Shreveport area, so it'll move through very quickly. But it will come in as a major hurricane with winds at 115 miles per hour. So be aware of that. And then eventually it'll be moving off very quickly and getting out of here. So. We are going to definitely be under the gun. Uh, if you're trying to make up your mind about evacuating, um, if I lived in uh, Orange or uh, Jefferson County, I would be evacuating at this point with these winds coming in uh, for late uh, Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. Uh, if you live up towards the lakes area, uh, definitely, definitely hunker down. You're still going to see over hurricane force winds there, and you're going to see quite a bit of rain. Uh, so. This is the latest update from the National Weather Service as of 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll continue to keep you updated as more updates come in. Our next update doesn't come in until 1 o'clock. And Patrick will be with you later on this afternoon into this evening, giving you another update on what the situation is. Uh, this is different from what we saw yesterday. Yesterday we had a Category 2. The track was a little bit farther to the east. Uh, today they updated it. We're looking at uh, Category 3, a major hurricane coming right up the Sabine River, basically, uh, as we head into early Thursday morning. Uh, we're going to let you go for now. This is the latest update, like I said, at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll stay on top of it. We'll keep you informed. Southeast Texas, Southwest Louisiana.